outside of my girlfriend's spare bedroom. And the reason why I haven't been on YouTube in a while is because this guy right here, um, a water leak had developed inside of her house and I pretty much had to learn how to renovate a house pretty much overnight. And uh, this is the result. So this all used to be just a flat wall um, and the garage was directly behind it. Then this area used to be a closet. So. Uh, if you guys remember in one of the previous videos, we had the washer and dryer outside. So we went ahead and moved that inside and I expanded this room out. And then I also made a little bed frame for her spare bed to get rid of the box spring and just like those crappy little angle iron frames. And then over here, I still have to build a closet as you can see. So um, there's still a lot of work ahead, but um, let me go ahead and stop rambling and let's get right into what happened to Olivia Miata right before uh, the water leak happened. So let's get to it. In the process of doing the wrap, I figured I'd take it upon myself to begin the fuel system. So with that being said, I went ahead and removed the radiator, removed the battery, the battery tray, and we're going to relocate that stuff to the driver's side. And then I went ahead and removed all of the lines and the old Corvette regulator. So now I could take some of these lines and run them from the tank to the surge tank, which will be on the passenger side. And then we have all of the new stuff ready to go inside the car all the way to the front. So we have a nice clear platform underneath the car to start with. And let's go ahead and crank it out. So a little update. I got the surge tank mounted where I want it. Um, I have all the lines cut and fit exactly how I want them. Everything clears. That's why I have the radiator sitting right inside here. Um, I have it going through a hole that I need to get a rubber grommet for just so the lines don't get cut open. And then we come around to the fuel tank. Everything's plugged in, ready to go. We have our main feed right here, main return that need to get ran up underneath the car. And then that's going to come up and plug into the fuel rails. So this is going to be where it's fed in right here, comes along, we're gonna have a crossover that comes back and then it's going to dump out the back of the regulator right there and then go straight back to the surge tank. So those of you that don't know how a surge tank works, I drew up this little diagram real quick just to show you. So you have a um, in-tank fuel pump on your factory uh, fuel tank that's going to feed the surge tank. And then as the surge tank starts to fill up a little bit, these two pumps are going to feed fuel to the engine. We're gonna have a crossover at the engine. Uh, it's gonna be regulated down and the excess from the regulator is going to come back and keep on filling up the surge tank. And once the surge tank gets full, then it's going to recycle back into the main fuel tank. So this is going to stay full 99.9% .9 of the time. And then uh, hopefully we don't have any fuel starvation issues. So yeah, um, let me go ahead and keep on banging this uh, stuff out. I need to run these two uh, fuel lines straight back through that little hole right there just to get it inside the trans tunnel. And then we'll find out where we're going to put our uh, fuel filter. So let's get to it. Okay, I've been running around all day getting everything needed to complete this. But uh, I have the surge tank mounted right down there on both sides. It's not going anywhere. Um, I still have to tighten down every single fitting where it joins together. But uh, I have the rubber grommet right here. And then you guys already saw the uh, stock tank. And we come up here. Um, I installed a little eBay catch can. Um, I got the fuel rails on because I needed uh, these little bolts right here, um, got those brackets whipped up and the fuel rails on. Then I have the lines coming up against the firewall, plugging into the back of the rail. So feeds right here, crosses over, comes back, regulates it down, and then comes through the return right back here. So um, if you bear with me real quick, we'll go up underneath the car. I finally have the hydraulic handbrake line ran. So it comes down right here and the fuel lines drop right in front of the factory gas tank right there. I have it secured with 12 millimeter bolt right there. And we come back, the line's going forward. We have the fuel filter right there, along with the handbrake line just held on with a couple zip ties and we have it bolted on right there. 
handbrake line comes up to a little grommet inside the hole where the factory kibble goes. And then we follow the lines all the way forward. So um, there we go. Lines go all the way up. Let me see if I can get a different angle on that sitting. There we go. That's much better. So yeah, um, turned out really, really good. And I'm about to tighten down all the lines so we can give this thing a test fire, see what happens. Okay, so I got another little side project done that's kind of essential for tuning. Um, I installed the boost controller. So I cut the main line coming off the uh, wastegate, and then we ran it up around the engine all the way back. And then I installed two little vacuum ports right there that drop down inside the passenger compartment. And then the vacuum port that comes off the back of the intake right down there comes up to a Y that feeds the signal for the regulator. And then that feeds vacuum inside the car. That's this one. And then this one goes to the wastegate um, out here and it goes into the boost controller inside the car. So if we come over here, uh, we got the boost gauge right there and the boost controller right over there. So the boost gauge back behind up underneath the dash, it has a Y that's getting the intake fed to uh, this gauge over here. And then the other half of the Y goes to the boost controller. And then the other half of the boost controller goes out to the wastegate signal. So yeah, um, did that today. And uh, Eddie got the front bumper pretty close to being uh, finished. That's looking really good. And then also we tinted at the tail lights. So it's gonna look pretty good when it's done. Okay, everything's tightened up and I pressurized the surge tank to see if it was gonna recycle back without any leaks and it does. And then I went to go test the 2044 pumps and this is the only fitting that's leaking. So um, it's super nerve wracking when you're doing this, but uh, that's the name of the game. You test things before you actually go out and do them, especially when it deals with fuel. Um, for pre for those of you that previously know me, uh, <laughs> you know that I've dealt with a very bad fire before. So um, yeah, let me go ahead and tighten down this fitting. I'll test it again. And if it gives me the green light to start it, then we'll go ahead and do so after we set the fuel pressure. So let's do it. So the second issue came about, um, I was setting fuel pressure and right there, you can tell that there's another leak. So I'll keep on going. Okay. So since nothing's leaking, I decided to start working on some of the wiring just to get it put in its final place before uh, we throw everything back together. So it looks halfway decent. But um, you know me, I go to the junkyard and I try to budget where I can and wiring is one of those things where you can find almost anything at the junkyard. So um, it's not new, but it's OEM. So obviously OEM makes some good quality stuff or else they wouldn't be in manufacturing. But with that being said, I went to the Dodge Magnum and found a really nice one gauge battery uh, cable. So this is going straight to the alternator and starter because I've been having some weird issue where um, the alternator is only putting out like 12.4 and eventually the battery dies. So um, I'm running a separate battery power for that. And then we have a two gauge wire again from the junkyard. I think this was from a Jaguar X type. Uh, it's going to run over to this little panel that I made. Um, it's going to feed a 250 amp fuse block that 250 amp fuse block is going to distribute out underneath the dash then it's going to go to a 100 amp circuit breaker and then to down to a smaller fuse block which will probably be 30 amps for each component which will be the cooling fan the uh, main fuel pump and both auxiliary fuel pumps right here so um, i kind of got started on it i found this 250 amp fuse block out at the junkyard obviously from a Jaguar X-Type. And then this little resettable circuit breaker came out of a limousine that was out there. And then this I had to order off of eBay. I think it was like six bucks. 
and then the relays you can find all day out there so um like i said before battery power is going to come in and then this is going to distribute out to un underneath the dash so it's going through being protected by a 250 amp fuse so if it magically shorts behind the seat it'll blow this fuse and turn everything off so um from there we're going to go from this resettable circuit breaker down to the fuse block and then from the fuse block we'll go from the other side of the fuse to the relay and then obviously the relays will distribute out as needed so let me save you guys the headache and i'll get this thing all done and show you the finished product Alrighty, guys uh i don't have a stud gun so i just took some bolts and welded them to the back side where everything needs to go so the board's pretty much done. Um, we'll go ahead and slap it together just to show you. So it sits on nice and neat right there. So it goes like this. And then these guys go right here. Like so. These are the 70 amp ones. These are only the um, 50 amps. So we need these two for the cooling fan and the Walbro 450, and these are for the two zero four fours. Let me take this, and it goes like that. So now all we have to do is wire it up, and then this is obviously for the clamp that runs the main power wire to this terminal. So now we gotta wire it. Alrighty, lots of progress. So majority of the wiring is finished. Um, I don't have any fuses in this. I just have paper clips, but they'll still get the job done. Um, I'm missing the terminals for uh, the wiring. So I just have it clamped to the bare wire right here just for testing purposes. Um, same thing over here, but uh, have everything pretty much how it's gonna be. I, like I said, I just need the, the copper lugs. So um, we're going to test the voltage with my power probe just to make sure the battery is putting out uh, 14 volts and the chassis is grounded pretty much everywhere same thing up in the engine bay so let's give it a shot see what happens deal finished um i painted it i got the radiator and cooling fan installed um the batteries tied down search tanks installed the wiring is complete and yeah uh, i decided to take it for a test strip and this is what happened So as you guys noticed, uh, as I was creeping forward, the transmission started to whine or like bind up every single rotation. So something's either going on with the gear set or a bearing. I don't know. Um, I'm going to tear it apart one of these upcoming videos and we'll go through it. I mean, it shifts fine. It works great. It just has that distinct little tone and you can feel it inside the shifter. So something isn't right and it needs to get addressed before uh, something catastrophic happens. So. Uh, like I said, that's going to be an upcoming video and I'll catch you guys next time.